Alcorn State and its fans invade Atlanta. The MEAC SWAC Challenge officially kicking off the return of black college football in the fall. Alcorn fans, North Carolina Central fans, it was a vibe. Is that what we say now? I'm, I'm kind of out of practice. I don't know. Hey, it was cool, man. <laughs> this dude showing us how everybody was feeling before the game. All summer, Alcorn folks said it will start in the A and in the A. Let's see. Felix Harper, the trigger man, delivering to LaCharles Pringle. Harper then finds Juan Anthony Jr. And Alcorn State is up 7-0. North Carolina Central, when it's time to tote the rock, call 1-800-Isaiah Totten. First quarter, he reels off back-to-back -back first down runs, but the drive stalls. The Eagles go to the pooch punt, seemingly nailing all corn into no man's land. But the Braves have a man, Statford Anderson, 6'1", 2'10". And shout out to his offensive line because they made a hole as big as all outdoors. How do you slow down Felix Harper? Well, the best way you can. Ow. Ow. That's rough, man. But despite the penalty, the Braves stall on that drive, settle for a field goal that they would miss. Coming right back, Alcorn has no problem letting Nico Duffy handle the ball, and you see the return on investment there. More from Anderson. He's going to move those chains. Things looking good for the Braves until Harper gets a case of the Lucy Goosies. And there she blows. Is there anything harder to pick up than a loose football? Central does pick it up. Alcorn has to draw something up to stop the Eagles. Davius Richard dropping back and firing to Deshaun Stevens. And then Richards calling his own number in the huddle. And shout out to those big Eagles up front, creating their own hole. Richard dives in at halftime. It is a 7-7 seven seven ball game. We'll have more on the bands coming up on all of our HBCU game day platforms. Look out for that. Back to action here, third quarter. Richard ready to rock and roll. Afterward, he said he was ready for someone else, anybody, to finally hit him after two years of practice. Anytime somebody get close to me, whistle, whistle, whistle. So it felt good. Like before the game, my emotion was all up. I had to come with down a little bit. It's been so long, like 660 days. Jamal Curry Elliott from North Carolina Central University Junior College, a.k.a. Hillside High in Durham, all the way down to the two-yard line. Touchdown time again. Richard. Hard to get a handle on this young fellow from Belle Glade, Florida. The extra point would be blocked, so Central up now 13 to seven. Hey, what's going on here? Could, could Central win this thing? Later in the third, Central backed up punt. Whoops! Harper going for the throat, ensuing play, but just a little bit long, but here is a surefire solution, Nico Duffy. Weaves his way down to the six-yard line and just get Duffy in space. Good things happen. Four-yard touchdown pass from Harper. Alcorn State back up 14-13. Central sets up a drive that goes from the third quarter into the fourth quarter. Ends with the field goal. Eagles up 16-14. Alcorn State sputters on the drive. The ball sailing over Harper's head, and he's flagged for intentional grounding. They are forced to punt, and then this happens. Brandon Codrington from Broughton High School, Raleigh, North Carolina. He avoids that first tackle, and after that, turn out the lights. The potty's over. Brother man is going, going, gone. He has the speed, the blockers, and a 77-yard touchdown run to his resume. Just over 11 minutes to go. The Eagles now up 24-13. to 13. From that point, the central defense would shut down the Alcorn attack, and the stats don't lie. Alcorn simply could not convert third downs. They were 1 of 10 on the game. Central 7 for 14 on third down conversions. They gave up zero sacks. The Brave fans heading to the airport for many of them. An unhappy outcome, but not for North Carolina Central. 
They pull off the big upset. No one gave them a chance to win. Trey Oliver says, slow down on not respecting the MEAC. I mean, yeah, we have a chip on our shoulder because my question is why, why is so much talk about the, the SWAC and we've run, we've owned Atlanta for the past 14 years? I don't get it. We play good ball in the MEAC. And not to take anything away from the SWAC, I was down there. I played in our coaching SWAC for several years. But we played good football in the MEAC. Um, I know we lost uh, um, North Carolina A&T, FAM, and Cookman. Right. But we've won championships since the last time two of them schools won one. So we play good football, and we will continue to play for good football, or at least in Durham, North Carolina, we will. The third down conversions, I think you were one for 10. And as you go to face Northwestern, what do you think your tweaks will be on the offensive side of the ball? Uh, you know, the efficiency tells off on itself. You know, you, you have to convert on third down. Uh, that's the only way you get, get another first down if you're going to go. You know, you got to convert. Uh, we do a good job uh, of converting on third down. Uh, so we did some good things on fourth down, uh, going forward on fourth down. Uh, maybe we should just skip third down and play fourth down. You know, so, you know, it's just things that happen that nature, you know. So it's, it's, uh, it's a matter of fact, it's executing. We had guys open. Um, we had running lanes at some point, but we didn't finish the plays on third down. For me, it just felt good to go against somebody different other than the offense, every practice, every day, seeing them, it's just good to tackle someone else, talk to somebody else on the field, seeing the fans out there, getting a, getting a feel of that, it just, just felt good.